So one thing that we need to do is take the detector we've got, make it better, make it more sensitive. And also, because the signal we've seen is at quite a low frequency, try and improve the low frequency noise level. Make the machine even less noisy at low frequency, which means better vibration isolation, better suspensions on the mirrors, technology, more technology improvements. And we've got great groups in this country for doing that. Okay? So the next thing I think we need to do is to think about maybe detecting light from events that also emit gravitational waves. Now it's hard when you've got black holes, because black holes are dark. They don't, we think, emit light. But there's another type of contact object called a neutron star, which is another LIGO target. And when two neutron stars collide, we will see probably bursts of neutrinos, bursts of X-rays, but maybe even bursts of radio waves. And so there's an effort at Sheffield to build and um, we're in collaboration with a, and other groups, but we're one of the founding groups of this, a, a rapid follow-up optical telescope with tens of square degrees of field of view to point at the sky in the direction where we think gravitational wave sources may have come from. Okay? The third thing we need to do, and this is probably the, the most challenging, is be aware that the, the frequencies of gravitational wave sources are not very often as high as the frequency we've detected. We're looking at high frequencies because on Earth we have to, because of this seismic noise background makes the low frequencies too noisy to look at. So if you want to detect low frequency gravitational waves, and there should be lots of them, then you need to go into space. So there's been a proposal on the table for a long time to build an, an instrument called LISA, which is an, a, a constellation of satellites and you do laser ranging between the satellites. The satellites are several million kilometers apart. And using that configuration of satellites, you can be sensitive to gravitational waves at frequencies of one thousandth of a hertz. So one vibration every thousand seconds and thereabouts. Now, it's hard to go into space because you have to get the technology right first time. If you do anything wrong, you can't go up and fix it. So it's very challenging. But because we know these signals are there now, I think as, as a, well, you know, as really humanity, this will, be, this will be a worldwide project. We should, in my opinion, accelerate this project now and, and get Lisa up there. It's scheduled for launch in 2035, which is a long way away. I'm hoping myself that the discovery and the de direct detection that we've had will spur on the funding agencies and the politicians to make this a priority so that we can all learn more about the universe. It's, it's really that simple. So I see the future of the field as improvements to the ground-based detectors, an effort to put up a space-based detector. There's lots of work for the next generation of scientists, for people who want to be students at Sheffield in the physics department. And I'm very, very excited about where this is going and I'm very happy and, and proud to be a part of it.